While there are many podcasts for farmers, such as those from GRDC, MLA and Beef and Lamb New Zealand, there aren't many about the practice of extension for enablers of change. In today's episode, we're going to explore the top five podcasts we reckon are worth listening to. Sadly, there were a few podcasts for extension practitioners, but they seem to have fizzled out. I'm particularly thinking of Working Differently in Extension by Bob Birch. It was the one that had some quirky organ music as an intro. He interviewed a range of extension professionals from the Cooperative Extension Service in the US. He was formerly a radio announcer and created 124 episodes, but sadly, none have appeared in the last couple of years. I'm guessing he may have retired, John. And Denise, we might retire after we've done 124 episodes too. We've done about 40 now, and I think we're getting into our rhythm. Lots of people start their podcasts, but peter out after about seven episodes. That's called pod fading in the industry. It's estimated that three quarters of all the podcasts started just pod fade away. But hey, we're still here, Denise. And as far as I'm aware, our Enablers of Change podcast is really the only one that offers dedicated content about the practice of extension. But all is not lost. There are some other really good podcasts that are relevant for Enablers of Change. The first that comes to mind is Choiceology with Katie Milkman. This was originally hosted by Dan Heath, author of books like Made to Stick and Switch. We've often mentioned Dan's work in our previous episodes. This podcast is all about making good choices and explores various aspects of behavioural economics. Our second suggestion is a Kimbo by Seth Godin, who we've also mentioned before. Seth talks about marketing, communication and culture. The episodes are really interesting and invariably end up challenging us so that we walk away with something useful. Number three is Work Life with Adam Grant, who explores, and to quote him, the science of making work not suck. <laughs> He's interviewed some really interesting people, such as Malcolm Gladwell and Richard Branson. He's explored topics such as the burnout myth and why we procrastinate. It's produced by Ted, the people famous for the TED Talks. Coming in at number four, and my personal favourite is Download This Show with Mark Fennell from the ABC. He and a panel of tech experts explore the latest trends in social media, consumer electronics and digital politics. I always find something of interest, even if it's just to hear the latest problem with Facebook or Apple. Okay, so sit tight for a little bit of self-promotion, something we're usually not very good at. Number five is our own little podcast, Enablers of Change. We're particularly mentioning this for those of you who access our content through the blog posts or the YouTube videos. Of course, if you're listening to this as a podcast now, uh, we know you, we've got you hooked. Um, unlike many of the ones we've already mentioned, we don't have a million dollar company backing us or a team of 20 sound engineers and production managers. I'm sometimes quite amused listening to the end of a podcast episode, only to then hear the long list of people who helped create it. Same here, Denise. I sometimes roll my eyes at the number of production assistants some podcasters use. So folks, that's our short list, but let's go a little bit deeper. Denise, podcasts aren't right for every audience. So who do you think they are good for? Well, John, I don't know about you, but my listening of podcasts has plummeted since the arrival of COVID-19. I'm just not traveling as much, either in the car or on airplanes, and that's where I usually listen to them. So I reckon the ideal target audience for agricultural podcasts are those farmers who are in tractors for hours on end, especially if they're using one of those fancy self-guided tractors, John. <laughs> Yes, I'm the same, Denise. I've had so many unlistened podcast episodes backed up on my phone that I've had to delete many of them. Perhaps another ideal demographic are the part-time farmers who, you know, hold down a job in the city through the week and travel to their farms on the weekend. They might listen to podcasts while they travel to work each day on the bus or train. Similarly, they could listen to them as they drive back to their farm each weekend. They might be the ones actively seeking information too, as they're new to the farming business. 
I'm thinking, John, that for the end user, podcasts don't use much data and automatically download onto your device, making it really convenient. Probably the hardest part is selecting a podcast app and then subscribing to suitable podcasts. From the creator's perspective, podcasts are relatively easy to create in that you just need a microphone, a recording device, and some audio editing software. That sounds just about right, Denise. So it's surprising that more people aren't creating them. I reckon that too many extension practitioners are caught on what I refer to as the hamster wheel. They're too busy rushing around doing things to be able to take a step back and create some useful content, whether that be a simple fact sheet, a short video, or in our case, a podcast. I've heard people lament the fact that at times it seems they're saying the same thing over and over again to their farmers. That's where creating a short information product could be useful. That's right, John. And we created an episode all about flipped learning, which is what we call that approach. So there you go, folks. Now you know our top five podcasts for enablers of change. And because we listened to your feedback in our recent survey, we then went a little bit deeper and explored which audiences might prefer podcasts and how we might better use them as enablers of change. So you probably know the drill by now. We've shared our thoughts with you and we'd love to hear your thoughts. Add a comment below the blog post and tell us about the podcasts you'd add to our list and how you think that we might make better use of them in our work as enablers of change. And if you found this episode useful, please send it on to some of your colleagues so they too can benefit. All the best until we meet again. Mm -hmm.